Morning, friends. Welcome to Village Idiots of Christ, where we're nuts for Jesus and just plain nuts. If we're out of our mind and for the sake of God, for in our right mind, it's for your sake. We are we are here today, this morning. We did Revelation chapter 8 yesterday. And this morning we are doing something completely different. Amen. I don't know why this came to my mind yesterday. I was at a Dunkin' Donuts having a coffee yesterday. and But Philippians 8, I don't know why. Philippians 4 verse 8. <sighs> Excuse me, Philippians 4 verse 8, one of my theme verses for life, came to my mind yesterday. And in fact, we have a pillow when we got when we uh, first got together. And um, it's got Philippians 4 8. It's got our, our marriage date and all of that stuff. It's got Philippians 4 8 on it. And it's it's it goes along with what God told Joshua uh, in the beginning of Joshua. Uh, God told Joshua after they crossed the river and they were in the promised land. He said to uh, he said to Joshua, he said, meditate on my word night and day, and then you'll have good success. So meditation, what? So what is meditation? Meditation is deep thinking. It is pondering. It is rolling it around in your mind. It is. It is. Is it is. Uh, meditation would be uh, sometimes going back to the Greek or the Hebrew, like with the word um, justified, and I looked it up, it means to be made innocent as if you had never sinned before. That's meditation. Not that you have to go back to Greek and Hebrew, but it's rolling it around in your mind and praying about it. And God, what does this mean? It's not just casually reading a verse, but it's 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 pondering it. And uh, so Philippians 4.8 is exactly the same way. It's, it, it affects the attitude of your heart and what you're thinking on. We live in a social media-driven, AI-driven world now, which is rapidly, super fast changing around us. There's a lot of negativity, a lot of conspiracy theory. There's, and we live in a talk radio uh, before social media, you know, 20 years ago, it was all talk media, the Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and and um, all the uh, different commentators on both sides of the fence and uh, a, a, a constant news that we live in a constantly, a constantly, uh, a constant news world. In fact, I used to listen to um, National Public Radio every day, all day long, and God finally said, listen, stop doing this. He said, you're going to destroy yourself with this, all of this darkness, all of this negativity. And so, so the point is, <sighs> what you fix your mind on will, will frame your world. As a man thinks, Proverbs says, as a man thinks, so is he. You frame your own world. If you believe you're blessed, you will feel blessed. If you believe you're cursed, you will feel cursed. No matter what the reality is, you frame your own world by what you think. You know, the battlefield of the mind is real. Um, the The kingdom of God isn't from the mind, but it runs through the mind. And that's the playground where the devil beats you to death. That's where you have those bad dreams, where you have those bad thoughts. It's, it, 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 it's your reality. It creates your reality. Your mind becomes your reality. So, we're going to go to Philippians 4.8. I went, I'm in the Amplified today. And when you hear this, we're going to break this down a little bit at a time. But this is important. In this hour, you have to meditate on certain things. Philippians 4.8 gives us the list of what we should be meditating on, what we should be fixing our mind and our thoughts and our heart on. And Amplified is so deep, the way Amplified puts this. And I love, Amplified is considered to be the closest to the original text because it gives all the shades of the, of, of the Greek and the Hebrew. It gives all the shades. Um, you know, this word has this meaning and this meaning and this meaning. And Amplified Amplified gives all of those different shades of meaning to show you what could be what is being spoken here, and so Amplified is is um, is an ex it's a very wordy Bible. So I wanted to, I, I at one time wanted to teach out Amplified, and I very quickly realized that you, it's just too wordy to teach out of on a regular basis. But for Philippians four eight, you're going to be blessed today because I went to Amplified. And I got all the, excuse me, sorry about the yawning. I got, it's, it's five o'clock and I just woke up. I got all the shades of the meaning here in the Amplified. And so let's get right into this. Philippians 4, verse 8. 
And so listen to this. This is this is so so very very good. Here, let me. I knew it was, I was wondering. I couldn't see for a second there. It's okay. I, got, I had it too bright here. And so we got the we got the moon. We got the the, <laughs> the street light this morning. So anyway, let's get back to Philippians four eight. All right, let's start out here. Finally, brothers. So this is a concluding thought by Paul. Finally, brothers. Whatever is true, I'm going to read the whole thing, then we're going to go back and break it down. But this is very, very, I was, I mean, it's like this whole, this just came out of nowhere yesterday for me. So I want to really impress this upon you today. Whatever is true, honorable, and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, Whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of a good reputation, if there is anything excellent and worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Tell me that is not a powerful verse in the Amplified. Man. This is the list of things. I'm going to start from the bottom and work, not work all the way up, but I'm going to give the bottom thought. Think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Okay, we're in Christ, okay? And we have certain choices we have to make. What are we going to do? What are we going to think about? What are we going to speak about? What are we going to look at? What are we going to subject our ears to? What are we going to, where are we going to place our minds? Like the verse says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfect your faith. We're supposed to have ourselves fixed on Christ, a fixed gaze upon Jesus Christ, continually looking at the one who saved us. Okay, so there's certain verses that really cover this. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, for who the joy set before him endured the cross and scorned the shame thereof. So there's certain things we're supposed to be doing. So this list he's giving us at the bottom says that we are supposed to center our mind on these things that were just listed and implant them in your heart. I do this today. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go on to a long diatribe. I do this today because many of us in Jesus Christ focus on the negative continually. We're looking at the darkness. Now, let me, let me, before you go off on me here, that doesn't mean we don't, we're not aware of what's going on in Israel. We're not aware of the darkness around us in this country and all of the darkness coming. We're not aware of politics. It doesn't mean we're not aware of the darkness. We, of course, have to be. A, the Bible writes much about our enemy, Satan. Of course, we have to understand there's a battle. We have to understand there's spiritual warfare. We have to understand prophecies being fulfilled. We have to understand these things and see them, yes, but not focus on them continually, not implant all this darkness in our heart and not center our mind on the darkness. It's like hell. I can't sit here day by day, eight hours a day and think about hell. It's real. It's coming. Most people are going there, but I can't sit here and put my mind on it. I'd lose my mind if I thought about hell all the time or the book of Job and all the sorrow he goes through. I can't sit there and think about how much my brother suffered all the time. Not that that didn't come out right, and it, it, it did, Ed. And it's a great example for us uh, of endurance and all of that, but I can't sit here and think about that sorrow all the time. But many, many, many Christians think about the darkness all the time. They focus on the negativity. They're constantly in politics where they're taking sides. And again, we should have a side that we're on. Don't, again, don't, I'm trying to balance all this out even before I get into the list. But if all you do is focus on the darkness, you're in trouble, especially in this hour where much darkness may be coming. I mean, I've been off work since November 6th of 2023. I've been off work going on seven months. In another week and a half, it'll be about seven months. I've been off. I could focus on that and be mad and angry and brokenhearted. God, why? You know, I haven't truck drove. You know, why is my wife sick? You know, why are you wanting us to move up to Kentucky? You know, why, God? Why, why, why? <laughs> but I don't. I, yes, I'm aware and I know and I'm working my butt off every day to get prepared for this move. But I'm not sitting here thinking about it constantly, 24-7. I can't focus on that. My focus should not be those things. I'm aware. You know, I know. I understand. I'm living through all this. But I have to focus. I, that's why I listen to a lot of praise music. I want to keep my mind on the heavenly in the heavenly realm. And so 
If you're a person who naturally focuses on the darkness all the time, you better be careful because a lot of darkness is coming. You're going to get broken hearted. And again, if you're a person waiting for the rapture, I'm not putting that down. But hope deferred makes your heart sick. You know, we can get heart sick even waiting for the rapture to come. And so what's the list of the things we should be implanting in our heart and centering our mind on? It gives the list. So sorry about the diatribe there, but this is important. I really want to get this to, to over you to you today. I want to give you a different way of thinking. Because if you'll think on these things, you know, the joy of the Lord, think, think about what the Bible says in Nehemiah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that joy, according to New Testament, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. We should have a joy that's unspeakable. It's so grand and great, we can't even talk about it. And it's full of glory. We should have peace that's beyond understanding, according to what Paul said. A joy and a peace. We Paul said he was content in any and every situation. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, I'll give you rest. Man, God says in Isaiah, be still and know that I'm God. What are you supposed to do? Be still. <laughs> My friend Dwight, God's been telling Dwight to be still. <laughs> hey, this is funny. You're going to like this. I know I'm diatribing, but this is good diatribing. My friend Dwight, God told Dwight, he said, God said to Dwight, or Dwight said to God, he said, what am I supposed to be doing? Here? Dwight's 75. He's retired. He's got some money. And and he so he could do some things. And he said to God, what am I supposed to be doing today? He said, be still. <laughs> just be still. And God, Dwight says, what do you mean be still? God says, just be still. And Dwight asked him the question, how long am I supposed to be still? He said, you're supposed to be still today. And, and God's... <laughs> And Dwight says to go, well, what about tomorrow? He said, tomorrow, be still. <laughs> God has such a great sense of humor. That was so funny. So you see what I'm talking about here. These are the good things, you know. And so let's get into this list here. I'm just, I'm enjoying this teaching. I I knew I had to teach. This is the first time I've used my wife's phone. In fact, I was trying to get my wife's phone this morning. She had it hidden in bed today. So I couldn't, I, usually it's just sitting on her uh, nightstand there. So anyway, let's go here. Yeah, I turned the light down here. It was about to kill me. Uh, okay, finally, brothers. So this is the finally brothers. Okay, this is a concluding thought. Whatever, let, let's just, let's break them down by the Whatever. Whatever is true, honorable, and worthy of respect. So who's the truth? The truth is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So whatever's true, you should be focusing on Christ because he is the truth. Whatever is honorable. What does honorable mean? Well, okay, what's dishonorable means? Dishonorable means it's just terrible. It's a bad thing. The honorable is the things that are have integrity. Honorable means integrity. So fo focus on Christ. Focus on things that are of integrity, you know, things that are that are that are good, you know, um, and worthy of respect. Man, that's easy. What is worthy of respect? Well, what's worth, what's worthy of disrespect? You know, and dishonor. I mean, you, they're very 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 basic and simple here. So you're supposed to be focusing on the truth, the things that are honorable, and things that are worthy of respect. Amen. And then what's the next one? Whatever is, I love, I love this one. I absolutely love this one. This is why Amplified is good sometimes. Whatever is right and, and conjunction, junction, and confirmed by God's word. You know, there's a lot of right things in the world. And you go to Wikipedia and you can look up the right things all day long, but they have nothing to do with God's word. Focus on things that are right and are confirmed by God's word. Is that not good? You know, I'm, I'm, I, I have a saying: I trust, but I verify. You know, Reagan said the same thing to the Russians as far as his competition with the Russians, try, and, and trying to come to an arms agreement, all this kind of stuff. We're going to trust, but verify. You know, your life should be verified by the word of God, the attitude of your heart, uh, how you conduct yourself morally. What you're thinking about is, is all of these things they line up with the Word of God. I, you know, in this hour, I'm talking about always talking about loving the truth and so being saved. Are you a person of the truth? Are you a person that confirms your life with God's Word? Are you in left field somewhere which is completely outside of God's Word? 
You know, a friend of mine got into darkness one time and he was he was making a mistake and I'm not going to name him or any of that kind of stuff. But I, I tried to correct him. I tried to bring him back into line through the scriptures. I said, I said, hey, man, it's clear what you're doing here is wrong. And I, I was very kind, very gentle, very, very. But I was to the point because uh, I'm his brother. and I was watching his back because the devil gets all of us. The devil's deceiving all of us, coming at all of us. And he accused me of being self-righteous and judgmental. And I wasn't. I was confirming his life through the word that he was making a mistake and he didn't want to hear it. That, man, confirm your life through the word of God. Make sure what you're thinking on is confirmed by the word of God and that your life itself is confirmed by the word of God. That's so important in this hour of darkness. We're heading into gross and terrible darkness and the world is getting darker. If you haven't noticed, the world's getting darker and darker, not lighter and lighter, darker and darker. And so in all this darkness, you want the light of the word of God, the washing of the water, the renewing of your mind daily, the washing of the water of the word, confirm your life with God's word. Whatever is pure and wholesome, and that's so, what's pure? I mean, what's wholesome? The, the, the right things. Pure, I love purity, you know. Purity, I was thinking about purity and virginity, they go together. There's a, they're untouched. The pure things are untouched by evil. And meditating on the pure things, the wholesome things. The, what's wholesome? You know, just it's just good and it's right. Amen. Whatever is lovely and brings peace. Again, here's peace again. But whatever is lovely, you know, look at the look at the stars in the sky. They're lovely. Look at the look at the ocean. It's lovely. Look at the flowers. Uh, North Carolina has so many wildflowers out on the highways. Look at the lovely things. Whatever is lovely and brings peace. Whatever is admirable and of a good reputation. Man, the the admirable things. What is admirable? Things that we admire. Look at the things that you admire. Think on those things. Meditate on those things. And of a good re and of a good reputation. Meditate on the things that are of a good reputation or good repute. Man, don't meditate on all the stuff that's bad. Meditate on the good, the things that are of a good reputation. And then it has a concluding thought. If there is anything excellent and worthy of praise, anything excellent, if it's excellent, you know, excellence is easy. Excellence is excellence. It's, it's the best. If it's excellent and worthy of praise, is what you're meditating on thinking about worthy of praise. Much of this social media and talk radio is not worthy of praise. It's detestable. So think about the things that are worthy of praise. Amen. Think continually on these things. Again, and then center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Again, I'm not trying to take Facebook away from you. I'm not trying to take talk radio or, or, or the news away from you, but you have to balance in this hour, you have to have a balance. And the things that you intently meditate on should be the things of this list. Philippians 4, 8. Again, be aware of the darkness, but meditate on the honorable, true things of respect, the things that are right and confirmed by God's word. Meditate on the pure and the wholesome, the lovely and the things that bring peace. Meditate on the admirable and the things of a good reputation. And if they're excellent and praiseworthy, meditate, think continually on these things. I'm telling you, if you'll follow this list, you're going to be a blessed person. And uh, so just wanted to put that out to you today. Um, I, it just overcame me today. I mean, I don't, it just, I, I, it's just on me yesterday. And I had to look it up. I mean, I was literally in the parking lot of Dunkin' Donuts getting a coffee because I was working yesterday and it was raining and I wanted something warm and Philippians 4 8 came upon me it was the Holy Spirit and then I looked it up on Bible Hub again Bible Hub great recess there a great uh, great resource Bible Hub if you want to look at 20 or 30 different versions of the Bible English versions of the Bible anything you can imagine versions you've never heard of before um, it's fantastic for comparison and so that's it for today uh, we're 19 minutes in Hope you enjoyed this this teaching. I'm gonna put this out as a Philippians four eight, and so so you'll know what to look for. But um, appreciate you, love you, and again, take heart in the darkness. Take heart, 
we have a Savior who's the light. Who's who's Jesus Christ? He's the light of the world. What does that mean? His light dispels all darkness. It's like John, um, um, John, John one talks about how light has come into the world, but men love darkness. Man, again, be aware of the darkness, but don't meditate on it all day long. Don't let the darkness drive you crazy. Don't let politics and all of this nonsense take all the joy. I've got four things in life uh, that I won't sacrifice. Joy, peace, contentment, and rest. And I, I ran those down a little while ago. No one, no one, including my wife, my mom, my pastor, nobody takes away my joy, my peace, my contentment, my rest. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, peace that surpasses understanding, that knowledge, contentment in any and every situation, as Paul said, and resting at Jesus' feet. I don't sacrifice those things for anything. And I encourage you to make your own list, to meditate on these things, but have a, a, have a baseline in your life, a, a place that you will not cross. I will not cross this line right here. No one touches these things in my life. Man, you can have that for yourself and be blessed and uh but again fix your eyes on christ get your mind in the right place so you can endure the trials and tests coming to the world and uh because i i want you as my brother and sister to overcome to be overcomers to endure to the end and we endure to the end by the things we continually set our mind on and plan in our heart and plant these things in your heart and get them deep deep in your heart so they can't be touched by man or by anything or by your circumstances, by your life. Get these things in your heart deep so, so they're implanted there and they can't be touched. Anyway, love you, love you, can't get enough of you. appreciate you. We are Village Idiots for Christ and you have a blessed day and we'll be back in regular teaching mode tomorrow. But hope you enjoyed this today. We really wanted to affect your mindset and be a blessing to you today. Love you.